to the movie. It's yeah. okay, it's okay. Just go ahead, just push it. Let's expose it. Okay. So the times the times that he had bothered you the most, that got on your nerves the most was when? The father. Mm, I'm gonna say the times when I knew he was coming back to do nothing but cause trouble in a sense or just wasn't gonna do his part wasn't gonna be the person that we needed him to be and it just felt like he was getting over it kind of felt like he was getting over on us and I was just like that's wrong and I'm like I know he wrong and, you know it was just a lot to deal with and it's just like an act of betrayal you feel like you know you're not gonna do right by us and you're still here and you're putting up this front but I didn't know that the front I was like why didn't you believe him but the front that why you didn't believe him was love Yes, yes. On another note, look how fancy that Panera bread is. Yeah, that's very fancy. So, with that being said, would you be willing, would you be willing to see him ever again? Despite of all the confusion and the I think a part of me that he was caused in, you know, your relationship within yourself, within other people with you. I'm saying this after I sent him a letter, y'all. I sent him a letter and it was a real it was, yeah, it was real cutthroat. It just kind of went through, like, like the setup. Like they say, you figure out everything about your life, like how you're supposed to respond and think about things from, like, when you turn, like, five years old up until that point. So anything that you've been taught up until, that's what you have for the rest of your life, how to use. So if he doing something like, oh, my God, I mean, I hate to say it because it's crazy, but if you, like, pinch his nipple or, like, be mean and do something to him and then he do the same thing to you and then you learn, like, oh, an eye for an eye. Like, if someone hit me, I'm going to be mean to them. If somebody, you know, kind of throw shade on me, I'm going to throw shade on them. Mm -hmm. And you become this kind of person to think, oh, this is the way things work out. This is the way it's supposed to I want. Yeah, do unto others as, I'm, as they do unto me. Instead of a real person would have been like a real parent would have said, like, hey, don't, don't hit do me like that. First of all, I don't like being treated like that. You don't want me to pinch you, so I'm not going to pinch you. And I don't like when you pinch me, so we're going to keep our hands to ourselves. But right. this was a person who hasn't been taught that as well. So they don't have the instincts to be a good parent. To, to say, say no. no, like I don't, they don't know how to work it out, and it's like I don't know how to fault him. I don't know what it would do for me to see him because it's kind of like I feel bad for him in the sense of like the drugs was the only, yeah, no, you turn right here. I don't know. I mean, the drugs is probably the only way he could ever find relief in in his own life, and the fact that he had a family that was just not a part of it. That's a short term parking over there. So I think I seen the spot facing this way, right here. Right next to this handicap, perfect. But literally, I think it was that. I think that um, he didn't know better, so he didn't do better. Yep. And so, well, even when you have a family, you think, "Oh my God, they will change," but it's like, no, it don't. It becomes difficult. It still, it's hard for him. Maybe harder. Definitely. Because he wasn't used to having. A... But I think that the best takeaway from this is. I mean, of course, you wish that you can develop a relationship with a person because just because they tie to you in some kind of way because they mm -hmm. is your father. Mm -hmm. And but I mean, and if they die, I don't think it'll make too. I mean, I know that sounds crazy. And that's something I probably should work on myself. I'm like, oh, my, I don't think it mean too much for me. But I'm like, if something happened to my own mother and I'm like, you know, I feel like they it, but I guess they got so much pain in them that it's nothing like the pain that I think I could put on them is nothing. Mm -hmm. It's numb. They numb to it. So we just got out of Honey Boy, and I just want to say thank you, Alma, for the ticket, which we were able to use. It was honest. It felt true. It was well done. I, I mean, it felt so true that it, was, it did feel like a documentary at moments. It's going to be emotional for everything. Yeah, you saw it too. You like that's him. Yeah, that was him and his crazy way of being. Mm. Yep, because I can't trust it. This must be the tips of the high school. Hey guys, so, um, do you guys want to hear a secret? <laughs> it's 
actually probably not a secret because I'm sure that it has shown itself in the ways that I interact with people. I'm like looking at my microphone like a crazy person, but like the ways that I like, I've dealt with people. At first I thought maybe it was just me not getting what I want. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I, I didn't even think I had to work on it. I was just like, oh, you know, this is just a bad deal for me and it's a bad rap and blah, blah, blah. And as I start to get older, I start to see a bit of a pattern come into play. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'm a narcissist. And then I start to really get into therapy about that. And it was destroying me. It made me hate myself because there's really no hope for narcissists. Or at least as Dr. Romney puts it, there's no hope for a narcissist to lead like a healthy, hopeful life. It's just limited. It's it's not even worth living the way she pitches it. And it made me want to kill myself. And it made me want to kill my mother too, weirdly. And I know that sounds crazy to disclose, but it just made me feel like life was not worth living. And I don't know, I guess something about knowing, I guess that my mother wouldn't be here. I don't know if it's selfish and it was stupid and crazy and it was only through re-educating myself and getting my spirit revitalized that I was able to step out of that dark depression so that's why there hasn't been any YouTube videos but it was it was it was crazy it was it was dark and like I said only revitalizing the spiritual nature of myself that was the only thing that kept me going because the physical and the mental part of me were exhausted those parts were they were tired and the spiritual it was connected to a higher source to a higher source of energy and through that I was able to maintain and survive and and share my story with you guys and with other people um, in person and, and bring some relief to them it, it was amazing like I had a really good divine intervention with the lady I met whose daughter was weirdly born in April and she was thinking of committing suicide she was like talking about it to her mother and she was like 15 years old and that sucks because at 15 and I'm like 28 I'm like 15 like no I've experienced the best is yet to come and and seeing that from my perspective was enlightening for me but it was even more so for her because she could see that someone who was in that position had made it and it wasn't just a hopeful you know wish it was actually I made it I'm here I'm talking to you you're gonna be okay you know um and that type of intervention or connection is what honey boy was to me and it made me write a letter um because like I said people maybe you don't know this about me but my dad is like in prison and he's like a drug addict and I have a really stereotypical life that people wouldn't um, I guess in my mind, I hope people wouldn't expect because I, I, you guys probably see it. You're like, duh, I can tell your father's in prison. First of all, look at you. You act crazy all the time. So yeah, definitely one of your parents is a jail burden on drugs. That's obvious. I already knew that. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> well, um, I saw Honey Boy this weekend and I saw so many, like it resonated with me so deeply. And I was like, man, this is like, I'm happy to see, first of all, the healing in Shia for him to like put all of this together. It That's real work. That's a whole business of like emotions. That's a lot to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And he did it. And then he had the nerve to entertain us. That's the blessing that it, that's the fun part. Um, it just made me start thinking about things and I wrote a letter um, as you guys can probably see in the vlog that I did right after the movie but I wrote a letter and I want to share it to you guys I want to keep it quick so I'm gonna run through it so you guys can get on with your day but I say I stayed away from visiting my father in prison or reconnecting with my half-brother also I guess that's the real secret I have a brother oh my god yeah I do If there's a scene in the movie where shy well not shy otis is told to like hug himself and he's like you can't do that and i tried it because i wanted to see if it would work and i tried it and i was in the bathroom sitting on the toilet watching the trailer not this toilet but the one at home and 
it works. I was crying. I mean, you really gotta like get in there. You gotta like you gotta fill yourself. You gotta like dig into like the concaves of your back and just really like just say like I got you. Just just say I got you. And it feels good. It feels great.